Hi there, this is Josh from Literary Gladiators, and today I'm here with a book haul. Uh, the bookstore that I'm going to be talking about today is Bookateria 2 in Ocean City, New Jersey. Uh, this is my first time visiting there in seven years. Uh, I went there in 2015, and that was my very first uh, sp uh, store-specific book haul that I engaged. Uh, here is a... Uh, Here's a copy of their bookmark, uh, and uh, I was really impressed going there the first time, and I couldn't help but garner some more books this time. I picked up a total of 17 books, so it was a nice day. And first I went and looked at the plays, and I picked up two of them. Uh, first is The Waltz Intervention by Vladimir Nabokov, and the uh it gives you a very brief but satisfying blurb on the top and it says a fascinating and prophetic work about a madman named salvatore waltz and his demonic machine uh, so it's giving you that opportunity to uh it gives you just what you need to know but you're going to want to read more anyway I'm doing a little bit of readjusting as far as my uh, camera's concerned because this is one of the first videos that I'm filming with my brand new camera and I'll be interested to see uh, how it operates. Uh, the other is the complete plays of John M. Singh and uh, this includes uh, his six plays, uh, Playboy of the Western World, Riders to the Sea, In the Shadow of the Glen, The Well of the Saints, The Tinker's Wedding, and Deirdre of the Sorrows. Next, I put, picked up another nominee for the Booktube Prize. This was for the 2020 Booktube Prize, and that is Fleshman is in Trouble by Taffy. Redesser Ackner, and uh, this pertains to uh, Toby Fleshman uh, being uh, separated from his wife, occasionally getting the kids, and then at this point, getting the kids for good. Uh, and he has to uh, juggle that as well as his uh, as well as his career. Uh, and my impression is that it reminded me of something that uh, Saul Bellow or Philip Roth wrote, uh, because it follows a uh, it follows Jewish man and uh, the uh, challenges that this Jewish man has in their life, uh, which to me that seems like. Uh, the basic structure of a Saul Bellow or a Philip Roth piece. But on the topic of uh, Jewish writers, I came across uh, some of Leonard Cohen's novels. Uh, people know Leonard Cohen for his poetry and probably most uh, notably for his lyrics. Uh, if you have listened to or are moved by the song Hallelujah, that was his song. And uh, people probably recognize it greater in the vein of, a Jeff, of the Jeff Buckley version. And people are moved by that more. But uh, Leonard Cohen is very monotone with his uh, singing. Uh, there's a song that he wrote called Everybody Knows, and that really uh, harps upon his, uh, how monotone he is with the execution of his lyrics. Uh, but I picked up Beautiful Losers and The Favorite Game. And uh, both of them are set in Montreal, and both of them have to pertain to the uh, uh, life's struggles of uh, the particular characters at hand in the piece. 
I picked up another book by E.L. Doctorow called The Book of Daniel. Uh, sometimes I end up realizing that I, uh, that I acquire duplicates of works, uh, but I don't really mind because uh, I want to expand uh, my book collection uh, so that uh, if I decide to give books away or if I need additional copies of a particular book, uh, I have that option. Uh, I think that uh, just having physical books is a very uh, va a valuable and, a, and something that should be cherished in this world. I got a copy of the uh, of a book written by a lesser known uh, Nobel Prize winning writer, and uh, that happened to be uh, a Par Langerfist, who is a Swedish writer. He won the Nobel Prize in Literature in 1951, and this work is called The Dwarf. It was written by Par, a par uh, Langerdvest and translated into English. This version was translated into English by Alexandra Dick. And this follows uh, the subject who is uh, a dwarf of 26 inches and uh, told through their perspective and their eyes and their voice. I am definitely, I'm inclined to look into this one. Uh, I got a collection of short stories by Colin McCann. Uh, this is 13 Ways of Looking. Uh, this is actually uh, a novella and three stories, uh, but it gives me a sample of uh, what it is that uh, McCann's writing is all about. I know that Cormac McCarthy is also a writer that is coming in uh, demand according to YouTube statistics. Uh, so I've added some Cormac McCarthy pieces to my collection. Uh, the only one that I've read thus far is The Road and I thought it was just okay. Uh, here is The Crossing. Uh, that's the book that I found at uh, Bookateria 2. Next I got Recessional by James A. Mishner. Uh, this is actually the last novel that he wrote. It's not the last one to be released, but uh, this is his very last one that he wrote, and it's set in a, a retirement home in Florida and pertains to uh, one of the uh, residents and their uh, ability to find uh, new opportunities in life, even though the retirement home very much embodies uh, the twilight years of one's life. Next, I got Nemesis by Philip Roth. Uh, I've seen that Philip Roth has a complete collection uh, through uh, Library of America, but I have to decide when I want to make the investment of $240 to incorporate that. But I really liked the uh, premise of Nemesis, and it really made for a, uh, a story that I would be inclined to check out. Uh, it pertains to uh, life in Newark neighborhood during the polio outbreak. Next, I got two books by Gore Vidal. I believe I have at least one of these, uh, but uh, if I do, then I have two. And I'd be more inclined to loan out or even give away uh, my duplicate copy. Uh, I got Lincoln, and I got 1876. And if I know the, the uh, subject of Lincoln is always a fascinating one to look into and learn more about. But in this day and age, if you want to talk about uh, elections, uh, especially those that are more recent, 
1876 pertains to uh, such an election between Samuel Tilden and Rutherford B. Hayes, and how that went all the way down to uh, a, uh, a deal that was made in Florida, and it wasn't called until a few days before the uh, inauguration on Mar March 4th, 1877, uh, which ultimately went to Hayes. Uh, he's off, he was nicknamed uh, his, fra uh, his Fraudulency. Uh, throughout his term. Next I picked up An Audience for Einstein by Mark Wakeley, and I thought it was a very interesting premise as far as a uh, a dying professor who comes across a doctor who's willing to uh, uh, transfer their memory into another body, and then the subject to whom they plan to transfer the memory into. Next, I got the Everything German Phrase Book and Dictionary, uh, which is a, uh, a basic but fulfilling guide of uh, translating words from English into German. I also wanted to increase my Acastic Noir series, and so I picked up Portland Noir, and this is edited by Kevin Samsell, and this pertains to Portland, Oregon, not Portland, Maine. Uh, I was wondering which Portland it was for, and when I did enough reading, uh, it covers Portland, Oregon. And with wanting to uh, acquire more anthologies, I got Baseball's Best Short Stories. This is the expanded edition edited by Paul D. Stodahar. And uh, Chicago Review Press put together an extensive collection of short stories pertaining to different topics and different sports. Uh, including sports at large. Uh, they also did something about dogs. Uh, but these are all baseball-themed short stories, or there's a tie-in to uh, baseball. And if you look here, it's quite a, an extensive list of standout writers. A book that I was almost going to get uh, pertained to some local history uh, in Cape May County, which the bookstore is in Ocean City, so Ocean City is the northernmost uh, shore town in Cape May County. It's a beautiful shore town, too, and I really enjoyed paying a visit to Bookateria, too. They also have a prominent paperback swap where you can swap your books for store credit. And I might consider utilizing it if for some reason I feel that I would, uh, if for some reason there's books that I really don't want anymore, uh, if I wanted to do an unhaul and get some store credit in exchange. Uh, so I want to thank you for tuning into this video, and I highly encourage you to check out Bookateria too. Uh, keep an eye on their schedule. Uh, when I went, on the first day of summer, they were open from 10 to 5, uh, maybe 10 to 4, but I want to say it was 10 to 5, uh, and that was daily. Uh, but it's definitely worth getting so many books and then going and reading them wherever you want. Uh, I'm not much, I don't really like to read on the beach, even though I went to, uh, I went to Corson's Inlet to do some reading. Uh, I did get sunburned though, and I'm, if I stayed any longer, I probably would have been sun poisoned. Uh, I do, I probably should, uh, bring with me some sunscreen, 
and a sanitizer or hand wash that gets the sunscreen off of my hands because it becomes so grimy. Uh, or a spray sunscreen where I can just spray it on and not have to worry so much about rubbing it. Or bring the sanitizer anyway so that I can be assured that my hands are not going to leave a grimy residue on my book. But anyway, I highly encourage you to check out Bookateria 2. It is a great secondhand bookstore, and if you have any paperback books that you want to trade in, it is a pretty nice system that they have there. Thank you, and for now, keep reading.